Today we're going to focus on, we're going to make a, a few different videos and our main main first issue we're going to deal with is replacing this uh, ball bearing here and you can see that's actually missing uh, missing some of the balls inside of there and we've got a couple different things we can do to drive that out. So I've got all my transmission shafts and stuff out of my way right now. You can see that I have the case supported up in the air so that I have room to um, to drive something down. Now, I could simply find the right size socket and try and drive through this. Since I am going to ruin the bearing, I'm not to, or not ruin the bearing yet, the bearing's already damaged, so I'm not trying to save it. I could go ahead and just get a, uh, a smaller Ooh. socket and pop that in there. Just, you know, you know, knock this right through and it'll probably drive out there. But the one thing that I don't like to do is we know that that bearing is an interference fit or it's precision uh, pressed in that case. When I just go ahead and hammer this out of here, would you agree that I'm putting stress on the case? Yeah. So the way that I like to do it is simply to uh, to use heat so that I can go ahead and apply, um, uh, get this to, to fall out of the case a lot better. One thing you'll notice on here is, do you see where you have these uh, four holes? Yep. What this has is this has a plate that has countersunk holes that actually holds that bearing in place so that it can't come out when it's running. It's like extra protection not to let the bearing move around. So that's already been removed. Okay, this is a little Kawasaki rotary engine. The other thing I have to be careful of when I'm applying heat is that sometimes what will happen is I'll end up getting the case so hot that the bearing next to it might fall out too. It's not the end of the world, but it is just something to be cautious about. I really want to be intentional, and I want to really try and focus my heat in this area. Now, I'm going to do two things. I want to uh, really try and focus in this area, and I'm also going to temp gun it, because what's that magic number if we get aluminum up to and bearings typically tend to just uh, fall out? 200. 230 to 250. But 230 or so. 230 is kind of that magic number. It seems to work pretty well. So I'm going to sit and focus around that area. And what I'd like to do is prove a point. I'm going to attempt to take this bearing out without actually applying any real force. What I really want to do is I might just very lightly, once I heat this up to 230 degrees, and just barely push it, and it'll actually just fall right out of there. Make sense? So that's what our goal is going to be here. Um, to, to try. I don't want to sit and focus a whole bunch of heat in one area. So I'm just kind of rotating it around it because it's kind of shocking the case. We're taking it from room temperature and we're literally going to, you know, more than triple the temperature of that, of that part, right? So <clears throat> once I get it heated up a little bit, 100 and some degrees, go ahead and see where I'm at. 88. Only 80. So I'm going to keep kind of just rotating around. Don't use an open flame for this. It's too much. You'll potentially warp the case or uh, accidentally burn through. So you want to use an a infrared type heat source. Go ahead and see. A little under 100. Okay. So we're getting in the right direction. The other thing I don't want is I don't want to sit here and get this to 200 degrees on this side and then on the on the other side only be at 150. I want it to be really even all the way around. It's a little harder to do on this because we've lost some of our meat. You can see here in the case where there's a chunk of it not the same. So then I really want to be intentional right here. Make sense? as much as possible to keep that red heat source away from the bearing. Sometimes what some people will do is actually have a gallon of water or a five gallon bucket of water with some rags in there and they'll literally take the rag and touch the bearing to quench it and it will just fall out too. You get what I'm saying? You have the case really good and hot take wet you know water and touch the bearing with it and it'll shrink it and it cause it to come off a shaft that's another trick. 188. We're, we're 180 or so. What I'm going to do, trying to be effective for my, my time management here, is just to see if, if it wants to move at all. Okay? It's, it's making me have some effort. Did you hear that? But it's coming out really easy. You see how the bearing's raised up? Yep. So just, just to prove a point here, I'm going to go ahead and drop it out. 
okay? But you, you understand that if we kept heating that, would we be able to just let that thing just fall out? Yep. Yeah. So that's the way that you can get a bearing out when you're going through a case like that. And then the other thing we're going to know is that this thing was had a had a piston grenade in here. So there's all kinds of little aluminum, and the bearing uh, broke apart. So we need to get the surface really, really good and super clean. Then the next thing we do is once this is clean, now I'm not going to install the new bearing right now because I want to clean the cases first. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But then I'd go and I'd get this really good and hot. We'll do another demonstration on it. I will get that to around 230 degrees and then I'll take my new bearing and go ahead and just in insert it in and be done.